Welcome back to our Med Smarter Lecture Series, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Let's continue our discussion of lymphoid structures by discussing regulatory T cells. Now, what is the function of regulatory T cells? Well, they help to maintain specific immune tolerance by suppressing our CD4 and CD8 T cell effector functions. Okay, how do we identify them? Well, we can test them for the presence of CD3, CD4, CD25, and the Fox P3 expression. All right, activated regulatory T cells, also known as Tregs, will produce anti-inflammatory cytokines. Uh, and some examples of those inflammatory, anti-inflammatory cytokines are going to be your IL-10 and your TGF-beta. All right, let's relate this to a syndrome. Specifically, this syndrome is going to be IPEX syndrome, okay? I-P-E-X syndrome. So we're talking about immune dysregulation for the I. P is polyendocrinopathy. Okay, there's the P. The E is enteropathy. And then the X is X-linked. So IPEX syndrome, I-P-E-X, is immune dysregulation, polyendocrinopathy, enteropathy, and X-linked. These are a genetic deficiency of the FOXP3. And if you remember up here, that is identifying the regulatory T cells. So they're identified by that expression. And what that does is it conveys us a sense of autoimmunity. Okay, So people with the IPEX syndrome have enteropathy, endocrinopathy, uh, nail dystrophy is going to be another one that you'll see in these patients, dermatitis. Uh, you can also have other different types of autoimmune uh, skin, in, skin conditions. And one particular note here is that especially in male infants, it's associated with diabetes. All right, let's talk about how T cells and B cells are activated. And we're going to get to the specific downstream effects here in a minute. But before we get to that, let's talk about a little bit of information that we'll need to know down the road. Uh, what are APCs? APCs are B cells, dendritic cells, Langerhans cells, and macrophages. And beyond that, we need two signals here to be able to activate our T cells or our B cells or to have class switching occur. So we can't just do this with one signal. There has to be two signals that occur for this to happen. On the right side here, you can see uh, some of these activation and sw class switching that can go in here. We're going to discuss that in uh, the slide to come here. All right, so let's talk about the process of T cell activation. The first thing that happens for a T cell to become activated is you have to have dendritic cells or what we discussed earlier, uh, some type of an APC or specialized APC cells that will go in, they'll sample and process an antigen, and they migrate that antigen to a draining lymph node. So as you can see over here, this number one process is going to be that little blue thing that's going to uh, intake that particular antigen and digest it, then it allows that to um, move further down the road. So what's the next step? The next step is T cell activation. So this is our first signal. Remember we talked a minute ago that you have to have two signals for activation to occur. That first signal is the T cell activation where exogenous antigen is presented on an MHC2 receptor and it's recognized by the TCR on our T helper cells, which is a CD4 cell. Endogenous or cross-presented antigen is presented to our MHC1 using a CD8 cell. Remember our rule of eights, a CD4 is an MHC2 because two times four, and an MHC1 is a CD8 because eight times one all equals eight. So this specific step is occurring uh, in this region over here on this particular picture. Beyond that point, now we have to move to the proliferation and survival stage, which is our second signal for the T cell activation. And this is a co-stimulatory signal uh, where we have B7 proteins, which are CD80, CD86 on a dendritic cell and CD28 on a naive cell. And this particular point is going to be occurring here on this picture. And then finally, here at the bottom of the photo, the final 
process in this T cell activation is we have activated T helper cells that can produce cytokines. Uh, those T cells are able to then recognize and kill uh, any virus infected cell uh, as you can see down here in the bottom. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.